Before we talk about the next axioms, we're going to use the axioms that we already have to define a few things. First, the empty set. We know what this is, it's a set that doesn't contain any elements, but with the axioms that we have, we can prove its existence. To do this, we use first axiom zero, the axiom of set existence, to say that there exists some set S. And then we use the comprehension scheme to, to create the set of all X in S such that X is not equal to X. And so um, if S was any non-empty set, any element that we would find in S would be removed when we did this construction because there is no element that is not equal to itself. The next thing that we're going to define is what a subset is. So it's, it's represented by this symbol, kind of a sideways U, and we say that X is a subset of Y if for all A, A is in X implies A is in Y. And so this just means that X is a set that only contains elements that are in Y. It's kind of, uh, a, if you were to take elements from Y and make a new set from it, you would always end up with a subset. And finally, the last thing that we're going to define, which is something that's going to be very useful for us, is a function s of x, which, given uh, a set x, returns x unioned with the set containing x. And so, some examples of what this function does, uh, s of the empty set is equal to the empty set unioned with the set containing the empty set, which is equal to the set containing the empty set. Another example is s of s of the empty set is equal to the empty set, or the set containing the empty set, unioned with the set containing the set containing the empty set, which is equal to the set containing the empty set and the set containing the empty set. It's much easier to see what's going on than to hear what's going on in this case. So, um, now we can get to the last three axioms to discuss. The first is the axiom of infinity, which says that there exists x such that the empty set is in x, and for all y in x, s of y is in x. So this is a set which has infinitely many elements. Um, first it has the empty set, then it has the uh, s of the empty set, or the ordinal successor is what we call this function, and then it has uh, the ordinal successor of that element, and it just keeps on going, and we never hit the same element again. We don't fall into a loop. We just get these bigger and bigger, more complicated sets that look kind of like this. Um, and so this is the infinite set that we're guaranteed by the axioms. The next axiom is the power set axiom, which says that for all x, there exists y, such that for all z, z is a subset 
of x implies z is an element of y. So this is giving us the set of all subsets of a set. So given a set containing the elements a and b, the power set, or the set that's guaranteed to exist by this axiom, well, what's it going to have in it? It's going to have every single subset. So a one subset of AB is going to be the set AB itself. Another is going to be the set containing A. And then we have also the set containing B. And finally, another subset that you might not have thought of is the empty set because if we go back to our definition of what a subset is uh, if a is in x then a is in y well if any element is in the empty set then it is also in the set a b because there are no elements in the empty set and finally the last axiom that we're going to use um, for a little while is going to be the axiom of foundation which says that for all x if x is not equal to the empty set then there exists y such that y is an element of x and there is, does not exist z such that z is an element of x and z is an element of y. And so this one's pretty complicated. I'm going to write it in a different way as well, just to help us get a better understanding of it. So for all x, x not equal to the empty set implies there exists y such that y is an element of x. And for all z, either z is not an element of x or z is not an element of y. And so if you think about the meanings of for all and not, um, the, the equivalence of these two axioms should become apparent. And so now let's unpack this a bit to see what it means. So first of all, we're talking about a non-empty set. And we're saying that it has some element in it um, such that every element um, is either not going to be in that element or it's not going to be in the um, or in the, the whole set. So one thing that this prevents is having sets that contain themselves as an element. Because if a set contained itself as an element, then um, that the set itself would be that z. It would be a z which is both in x, the, the set, and it would also be in y, the, the instance of the set that's contained in the set. And so that's one thing that foundation prevents. But foundation is stronger than that because it also prevents, for example, having a set A which contains a set B which then contains the set A again. So we can't have these infinite descending chains of membership. Um, but foundation is actually just a little bit stronger than that too, but that is uh, a bit more complicated and we're not going to discuss this right now.